I'm going to go over the star, sixth grade star review that I handed out in class and emailed to you. The first thing we're going to talk about is classifying the whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. This was from the very beginning of the year. You can look at the Venn diagram and see which numbers go in. So let's go ahead and add some notes. Remember, whole numbers. No decimal, no fraction, and no negative numbers. Your integers. is no decimals and no fractions. Your rational numbers. These are basically all of your numbers. So 33 can be classified in what to what categories? It is a rational, it is an integer, it is a whole number, and it's a counting number. The only difference between counting numbers and whole numbers is zero. Think about when you were little and you used to count one, two, three, four. You never started with zero. So that's why these are counting numbers and zero is not. True or false? All whole numbers are rational numbers. Yes. If it is a whole <coughs> if it's a whole number, it has to go through the series. If it's rational, it fits here. Some rational numbers are integers. If it's an integer, it is also, if it's a whole number, it's also an integer. So it's like you have to go through the town, through the town. You have Texas, and then inside of Texas, we have Brazoria County, and then inside of Brazoria County, we have Manville. Inside of Manville, we have Rodeo Palms. Is Rodeo Palms in Texas? Yes. Is Rodeo Palms in, in Manville? Ye yes. Is Rodeo Palms in Brazoria County? Yes. So this is true. Well, let's go ahead and write this. The, if rational numbers is an integer and it's a whole number. Number three, true or false, all rational numbers are integers. Are all of these numbers integers? No. This is false. What is the difference between counting numbers and whole numbers? Zero is the only thing that is different. Put the following numbers in the correct category. Negative three is a integer. Four is a counting number. Seven and five tenths is rational. It is a decimal. So it cannot go into the integers. Zero, here, in whole numbers. Four fifths. I cannot change this into a whole number. Some numbers you can change into a whole number. For example, four over two can be equal to. So this will be a county number. Four fifths cannot change, so it is a rational number. Absolute value is the distance from zero. Here is five, and here is negative five. How far is it from zero? Five spaces. How as far is five from zero? Five spaces. So note, if the negative sign is outside the absolute value sign, the number, the number is negative. So this is four and five tenths. This is equivalent to 3. Since the decimal, the negative is on the outside, this is going to make my number negative. So it's negative 6 and 2 tenths. This is, if it was without this, it would be negative. But since the negative is on the outside of the absolute value, it is negative 9. We're going to go ahead and solve this. This is negative 6 minus 9, but this, since it's in the absolute value, this is 6 
minus 9. which is, it would be negative 3, but it's inside the absolute value, so it is 3. If asked for the opposite of a number, just change the sign. The opposite of 4 is negative 4. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. Equivalent value. Equivalent fractions, decimals, and percent. This means divide. 3 divided by 8. Remember, force and writer. This is the writer. This is the horse. Who goes inside the house at night? The writer. Who stays outside? The horse. Here, de percent to decimal. Remember, Dr. Pepper. If you're going from percent to decimal, you move this way. If you're going from decimal to percent, you move the opposite way. You, you, you will also need to know your place value, six tenths, six tenths. This is all some things that you learned from fifth grade. Now, two ways to write percent proportion. Part over whole, x over 100. We learn, that's how we learn. Part over whole equals to percent over 100. So we saw for x. How does 20 go to 100 times 5? Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. 18 times 5 is 90, so this is 90%. This is also a fraction decimal percent. I want to show, remind you, two tenths. This is how two tenths is read. Two over 10, and you simplify that. What can I divide two and 10 by? I can divide both of them by two. Two divided by two is one. 10 divided by two is five. So this is one fifth. I want one-fifth into percent. What percent is that? And percent is always out of 100. So how does 5 go to 100 times 20? If we multiply 20 at the bottom, we have to multiply 20 at the top. 1 times 20 is 20. Percent is always out of 100. Our top number is 20, so it is 20%. Same thing on all of these. Shade in the appropriate amount on the strip diagram of the hundred in which problem above. One whole. All of these are one whole. 33%, 33%, 33%. That equals one whole. One third, one third, one third. One fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. One fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth. This is asking me to shade this in 20%. So this is 20%, which is two tenths, and each this is a tenth. So I'm going to shade this one in, that's one tenth, and another one is two tenths. That is shading in 20%. Here it is 75%. So I'm going to say 25, 50, 75. 25, 50, 75. Now I am going to show you in 75 here. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. This is one third, no, two thirds. One third, two thirds. And I'm going to shade in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, and then just part of one. That is my shading in of 66 and 7 tenths percent. Here I'm going to shade in 90 percent. I know this is 100, so I'm going to shade in all but one. This is 90% shaded in. And 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90% shaded in on my graph here. Now plot the point on the number line. Here is my number line. 20% is going to be about right here. It's not half. This would be 0.5. This will be one whole, and this is about 75%. So this is 50%. Half of this would be 75%. This is 66%. This is 0.5, so it's a little bit past this. So I want to say this is the two-thirds, or 66 and 7 tenths percent. 90% is really close to one hole, so it's way over here. Gina makes 45 cents on the dollar profit selling cupcakes. What's her profit per dollar written as a fraction and a percent? As a fraction, this is 45 tenths hundredths, so 45 hundredths. I can divide both of these by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9, 100 divided by 5 is 20, so it is 9 twentieths. Written as a percent, I have decimal 45, and I remember Dr. Pepper. I am going to move, just move my decimal two times, 1, 2. So that gives me 45%. Number two, Lori worked for 30 minutes and only had three-eighths of her homework done. What percent of the homework did she have done? So we are wanting for a percent. So and we want to take this three-eighths was, was done. So three-eighths into a percent. I am going to divide. Three goes in the house. 8 goes on the outside. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. 3 in the house, 8 on the outside. 8 will not go, will not go into 3. So I'm going to add a decimal, add a 0. 8 will go into 30 now. Then we'll go into 3 times. 3 times 8 is 24. 30 minus 24 is 6. I add another 0 on and bring it down. 8 will go into 60 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. 60 minus 56 is 4. I add another 0 and bring it down. Now, 8 will go into 40 5 times. So my decimal is 375, but that's not what it's asking me. It's asking me for, for what percent. So to find the percent, I'm going to move my decimal two times. So I get 37 and 5 tenths percent. Tanya found her favorite jeans on clearance for 60% off. What fraction is equivalent to 60%? I know. 60% is, is, is always out of 100. If I just cut my zeros off, that's dividing by 10. So now I have 6 tenths. What number can go into both 6 and 10? 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 
So my fraction is 3 fifths. Compare and order rational numbers with or without the number line. 